Hi there, welcome to our seminar on Master Your Metabolism. Uh, thanks so much for joining me tonight, uh, Sunday night. It's nice to be able to learn from the comfort of your own home or car or wherever it is you are right now. Uh, my name is Linda Lukovic and I'm a registered holistic nutritionist and my husband and I own Balance Point Health Center in Oakville. I am really passionate about nutrition and all things healthy lifestyle. However, I haven't always been this way and this interested. Um, I struggled with my weight as a kid. I was kind of like the chubby kid. And I really do know what it feels like to really have to work to lose weight. And so I'm really excited to share a few tips with you this evening about how you can ramp up your metabolism and, and feel great again in your body. Uh, you're going to notice that I'm not going to talk a lot about weight, and there's a reason for that. I think that when we focus a little bit too much on weight, um, we can build unhealthy relationships um, and expectations for ourselves. And I was there too. I had issues in my 20s. And what I'm excited about teaching people is that you don't have to feel restricted. You don't have to feel like you have to count calories. You don't have to feel like you have to weigh yourself all the time to be truly healthy in your body. So I'm excited to share with you some, some healthy tips tonight. Now, because I'm also an essential oils educator, I am focusing a lot of this class on using essential oils to help support you in your metabolism revamp. So I'm gonna be referring to a little bit about what's happening in our world in terms of why we're finding it a little bit more difficult to lose weight. And I'm gonna give you some ideas on what you can do through diet and through essential oils to lose that weight. Make sure you hang in to the very end because I do have a webinar special. Um, if you don't have essential oils yet, to um, get them at a really great price. So make sure you hang in to the very end and, um, and I can tell you a little bit more about that then. I also ask you to uh, really keep an open mind with this and to think about um, one thing you need to hear tonight. So you're going to hear a whole bunch of stuff that's going to seem like common sense. It's going to be information that you already know about. But even though we know about it, it doesn't mean that we're doing it or we're following through. So what I'd like you to do is really listen and pay attention to that one nugget or maybe the two nuggets that you really need to hear this evening and take action on. Okay, um, let's jump right in. First, I want to talk about being successful in ramping up your metabolism is the, small, is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. It really is daily habits that either create health or take away from health. So I'm going to be talking about a lot of different things, and it's not just all diet and what you're eating, but things that you can do to help to contribute to your healthy, you maintaining a healthy weight. And it's really up to you on helping on integrating these habits, but I'm going to try to give you some support on how to make this easy. All right, so change ultimately starts with you. Like I said earlier, we all kind of know what we're supposed to do, but often there's something that's stopping us from making those changes. And what I love about what I'm going to share tonight is some of the things that I'm going to be sharing are really easy to implement. Really simple, doesn't take a lot of energy, but what I'm gonna ask you to do is focus on doing these things and creating these daily habits, and then you're gonna notice that some weight will just fall off, okay? Um, we're gonna be focusing on how to improve cellular health through some of the things that we're doing. When your cells are functioning well, they're able to help you um, get rid of toxins and, and balance stress, and from that, feel healthy in your body. So what's happening? So why is it so hard to lose weight? Why are even just young kids, if you take a look around, there are a lot of young people who are holding extra weight. And um, there's clearly more going on even today than there was, say, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago. So we know that there are lots of endocrine disrupting chemicals out there in our world, um, in our personal care products. Did you know that on average, women put about 200 chemicals on their body every day, starting with, you know, shampoo, shaving cream, if you're shaving your legs, conditioner, washing your face, toothpaste, hairspray. 
Um, and if you're eating a somewhat processed breakfast, there you go, add on more um, toxins that we're taking into our bodies. And a lot of these are endocrine disruptors. So what is an endocrine disruptor? It's something that will throw off your hormones and hormone balance is critical to weight loss and to maintaining weight. Um, also lots of pesticides on all of our foods, right? If we're not eating organic, um, we're definitely eating pesticides. Uh, much of the farming is done with seeds that have pesticides built into that seed. So it's really hard to avoid. Pharmaceutical drugs. I mean, a lot of us grow up just learning that you just grab a drug. Like if you have a headache, you grab an Advil. If you have cramps, you grab a Midol. If you have, um, you know, the flu, you, you take drugs. And, and that's just what we've learned. And so that can cause issues and tax your liver over time. And then also synthetic and natural hormones. Some people are using um, synthetic hormones. And a lot of us are getting hormones in through the water we drink. If you're drinking water out of plastic bottles, guess what? You're drinking hormones because estrogens are pulled from the plastic and can go into our body. And if you're drinking water every day out of those plastic bottles, you can imagine just how much you're taking in. And that doesn't even begin to look at all of the chemicals that we're breathing in. That is the easiest way for chemicals to enter the body. It's through the breath. But it's by inhaling, those chemicals reach every single one of your cells within seconds. So this is causing a lot of havoc in our bodies. And many of us are hanging on to weight as a result. Because what happens is your body creates a protective mechanism and actually surrounds toxins in fat to protect the body. And so the body won't let go of that fat until it starts to detox those chemicals. So just really quickly, we're gonna take a look at what endocrine disrupting chemicals look like and how it throws your hormones off. So first of all, um, the ones that might be familiar to you are parabens, plastics, phthalates, and pesticides. So you probably have heard of these ones. These are probably the most commonly discussed ones. And now you're even seeing beauty care products saying paraben free, right? Um, so, we kind of get these, but there's a lot more than these. And let's take a look what these are doing to our bodies. So here's an image that shows the cell, okay? And each cell has a receptor site. And these receptor site are supposed to bind to hormones, right? Healthy hormones in the body. And you'll see that the little shape there is perfectly shaped like the hormone to just sort of connect in, right? Like a plug into a socket. Now, endocrine disruptors are chemicals that have that same plug socket right as the hormone does and so what's happening is the endocrine disruptors are plugging into those receptor sites and throwing off the cell so the cell is no longer healthy because it's not plugging into those hormones as they were designed to plug into so this is causing all sorts of imbalance in the body okay and i'm without making things too complicated just know that we are taking in things that are throwing off our hormones and when our hormones are out of balance so is our weight maintenance, okay? So let's talk about some of the things that we can do to reduce the likelihood of what we just talked about, taking in those chemicals. So the first thing we can do is focusing on whole foods. And you know what? I think we all know this again, uh, but this is sometimes easier said than done. Would you agree? Sometimes we're busy and we just feel as if we don't have time to make our food from scratch. So we're reaching for those convenient school uh, foods. And guess what? The manufacturers are onto this. They know that we're busy. They know that we are trying to do everything. We're career moms. We're working moms. We, we, we have a lot on our plate. And so a lot of us are reaching to those convenience foods. And unfortunately, those are loaded with chemicals and things that are not going to support your weight loss goals. Okay, so one of the most important things you can do is to start eating healthier foods. And I'm going to make it easy a little bit later on by some, with some tips. Second thing to master your metabolism is to focus on protein and fats. Some of you might think keto diet, if you've heard of this. So I'm not a big fan of everyone going on the keto diet because it's a diet. And what you're going to notice with what I'm talking about here is this is not a diet. This is a lifestyle change. And this is something you would do for your life. Um, you would keep on with these healthy habits forever, 80% of the time. Okay, we're not, we're not perfect. But if you can do this 80% of the time, then you're going to do fantastic and feel amazing in your clothes. So when you focus on protein and fats, 
what happens is your blood sugar level doesn't rise up as quickly as if you were going to have like a piece of toast for breakfast, for example. If you were to have a piece of toast for breakfast, what would happen is your blood sugar would spike up really high. And then what happens is your body then secretes insulin, your pancreas, and then it pulls that sugar into the cells to give yourself energy. And then what happens is the blood sugar is now low in the blood. So the body says, oh, we need more sugar. And then there you go. This is what we call a craving. Uh, this is where your body's like, I need more sugar to keep going. All right. So what's happening here is then this terrible seesaw that's going to happen all day is up goes your sugar, down goes your sugar, sugar up and down. Um, if you're eating high, high carbohydrate foods, uh, this is going to tire you out and it's going to tire your pancreas out. And over a long term of this type of eating, it's going to, it could potentially cause chronic disease. So, and inflammation in the body. So we don't want to go there. The people who live the healthiest lives, according to a lot of the research I've done, is are people who have eat lower sugar diets, high protein, high fats. Um, the fats help to lower that blood sugar peak. So protein and fats do not raise your blood sugar as quickly as a carbohydrate breakfast. So even what you're looking at here, salmon and, and asparagus, you're better off eating this than a bowl of cereal for breakfast. You're going to feel fantastic at the end of the day if you're eating like this throughout the day. So the second thing is drink more water. So many of us don't love water and we need at least seven glasses a day, depending on how, what your weight is. Um, and what I'm going to talk about later is we've got some beautiful essential oils. When you add to water, they help to support your weight loss goals or your weight maintenance goals um, because they make your water taste amazing. Um, they work on very gentle detoxification and some of them even, even help with your digestive system. So we'll talk a little bit more about that that later. But water is so critically important to your metabolism because often when we feel hungry, sometimes it's because we're dehydrated. And when we're dehydrated, we feel tired. So one of the most important things you can do is when you're starting to feel hungry is to drink a glass of water first and then ask yourself, am I still hungry? So the next thing you can do to help increase your metabolism is to use sensory cues. So there's research done that shows that when you see delicious looking food, like this donut here, that you, you want to eat that healthy food, even though there might be an apple available. So this is the whole thing where if you have junky food in your house, it's better off to hide it. Uh, lock it away um, and to put healthier food out. So maybe you have a bowl of apples on your counter instead of a bowl of gummy bears. Um, it's really important to just keep that healthy available. Otherwise, these sensory cues are going to really get in the way of your health goals because it's really not about willpower. This is actually something that's happening in the brain and the marketing experts know this, right? That's why we see so many commercials um, talking about healthy foods. And, um, and we're programmed then to want to reach and eat that food. So the next thing you can do is experiment with timing and frequency. So there is a lot of research that shows that different foods are best digested at certain, digested at certain times of the day. So for example, your body in the morning does best with a high protein, high fat food. If you're going to have lots of fat, have it in the morning first thing. Um, I like people to leave or to continue eating proteins, vegetables, fruits in the first part of the day. And if you're going to have a grain, the best time to have that would be after 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And then that grain will then in turn help you sleep because we know grains help rise the blood sugar, raise the blood sugar level, and then it crashes. And then if that's happening at the beginning of the day, you're going to find that you're really exhausted throughout the day. So taking a look at the circadian rhythm clock here, um, what I also want to talk about a little bit later on is the importance of sleep. And you'll see at nighttime there what's happening with your hormones. So melatonin production starts at 11 o'clock at night. So it's really important to be asleep before 11 o'clock at night to get the maximum um, melatonin so that you can get into a really deep sleep because this is where all your hormones are being built. They're being built at night and also all of your detoxing is happening at night. All the organs are working through all the stuff you've taken in all day 
and it's getting rid of it throughout the evening hours, the nighttime hours. So if you aren't leaving 12 hours of no food, then you're not getting a full detoxification. So for example, if you eat something at 10 p.m. and then you have breakfast at 6 a.m., you haven't you're given your body enough time to detox all of the toxins and the things that it may have taken in the day before. And even just eating, like your metabolism in general, when you're chewing a food, your body, um, it releases things that have to be um, uh, processed at night as well. So that's a really important thing to do. So the next thing you want to focus on is relieving stress and anxiety. See, I haven't even talked about food yet <laughs> uh, because there are so many other things that are more important when it comes to boosting your metabolism. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is stress and anxiety. So um, anxiety is a huge epidemic now. And what they're finding is that 70% of adults say that they feel stress or anxiety on a daily basis. And so that is not helping us. That's working against us when it comes to weight loss, because when your body is stressed, you can't drop weight. You, it just doesn't work. Um, so it's, yeah. hello. It's really important to focus on uh, reducing stress. So I'm going to give you eight tips to reduce stress. And again, this is more important even before you start looking at diet yet. So the first thing um, to relieve stress actually is to reduce coffee intake or caffeine. Um, caffeine can come in like pops, chocolate, tea, coffee. And it's been proven that high doses can increase anxiety in some people. Some people are a little bit more tolerant to it. So you would generally know if you feel jittery or anxious having coffee, it's probably not the best thing for you. And what we recommend instead of coffee is maybe trying inhaling peppermint essential oil or citrus oils to boost your mood. Uh, the next thing you can do is whenever you're feeling worried or stressed about something, buy yourself a beautiful journal and just write it down. It's a really positive way to help to deal with anything that comes up in your life that you're struggling with and that maybe your mind is focusing a little bit too much on and causing that cortisol to rise and then stress to take over. Spending time with family and friends. So this is really important. In a lot of research, it shows that the people that live the longest, like, you know, those centurions, they studied the centurions, the people that lived like 110. And one of the things that they noticed in these populations and these people that lived really old was that they had this amazing community of support and it was family and friends. And that was a really big contributor to their long, long life. Um, so laugh. So I think a lot of us have heard this, that if you laugh, it increases your immune system. And um, so just deliberately try to laugh in the day, like whether it's finding a show that's really funny or um, I don't know, <laughs> hanging out with people who are fun, just try to do a little bit more of that. Um, I have a favorite sitcom that I'm watch watching right now. It's Shit's Creek and it's hilarious. So like you'll be able to find something, but find something that makes you laugh and try to do that every day. Number five, learn to say no. Uh, a lot of people struggle with this. Sometimes it's really hard if you're getting invites from people to say no to someone because you kind of feel bad. Um, but the most successful people and the most balanced people when it comes to stress are really good at saying no. And obviously there's a nice way to say no. It's like, oh, thank you so much. Um, I'd love to come maybe next week. And so you're not really saying no if you find that uncomfortable, but you're you're kind of saying no in the moment to whatever it is people are asking. Make sure that you're taking on only what you can take on and it's okay to say no. Um, six, avoid procrastination. I am so guilty of this. Like I am that person that waits till my gas is like on fumes and I know how far I can get on fumes. Um, it drives my husband crazy, but those days where I force myself to fill up my gas before it gets below half, I can't believe how much energy and how awesome I feel. It really does work. Um, avoiding procrastination is huge when it comes to stress. Um, practice mindfulness is number seven. This is big. Um, this is also something that I really have to work on constantly because I'm such a daydreamer thinker. Um, but this is something that there is a ton of research showing that people have less anxiety, people have less depression, people are generally happier when they practice mindfulness. And this can be as simple as focusing on your breath for a few minutes a day, really trying to keep the thoughts away and just focusing on what's happening in the moment and just being there 100% fully 
present. Uh, this is even a technique that people with anxiety practice, for example. They're taught to, for example, if you're feel, feeling really stressed, all of a sudden just find five things that are blue in the room, okay? Or listen for five sounds that you can hear around you. And this forces you to go right into the present because there's no stress in the present. The stress comes from the past and the future. It's you mulling about things that have happened or thinking about what could happen in the future. But when you're in the present, there is zero stress. And then the final uh, way to reduce stress and anxiety is to diffuse essential oils. So you guys, we know there's tons of research that shows um, specific oils like lavender, rose, vetiver, uh, Roman chamomile, frankincense, ylang ylang, geranium. There's quite a few oils that really do help to reduce cortisol levels, um, which is reducing stress. All right, so we're getting to the, the the uh the food but we're going to talk about the next most important thing which is sleep so there's been some recent research that talks about just how important sleep is um, first of all why is it bad or negative to get less than your seven you know six seven hours a night so they found that um having poor sleep actually leads to obesity in adults and children so um, there's a direct link there so that was pretty interesting um, also, people who are sleep deprived have an increased appetite. So I think many of us know that, like those nights where you don't sleep as well, you, like people crave carbohydrates more, sugar more, because it's giving you that energy that you need because you're so tired. It can also decrease your self-control and your decision-making abilities. Um, so you might be making poor food choices. It can also increase your calorie intake because you're potentially late night snacking. You're probably eating a little bit more, again, to get that energy that you're constantly looking for to get through the day. And what's also interesting is that your resting metabolic rate, um, which is basically the number of calories your body burns when you're just sitting there doing nothing, um, it can be impacted by poor sleep right? So even just having a bad night's sleep lowers your metabolism. So if you're going to focus on anything, you guys, focus on reducing stress by using your essential oils and sleeping better. And I'll talk about some oils that you can do for that in just a moment. Um, also, this one final point is there is some, a really neat study that also shows that um, lack of sleep can also be a precursor to weight gain and type 2 diabetes, which no one wants. <laughs> if you know anyone with type 2 diabetes, you know it's just an awful uh, disease that you want to prevent. So how do we improve our sleep? So if you haven't tried Serenity Soft Gels, though, are, those are incredible for helping to promote a restful night's sleep. It's not just essential oils, but there are also L-theanine in it, which helps to calm the brain and the nervous system, and it's incredible for getting a good night's sleep. Um, vetiver is a fantastic one if you have a really busy brain. So diffusing that or rolling it onto the bottom of your foot is a great way to sleep well. And then diffuse balance before bed. There's also some other oils like cedarwood and even wild orange works for some people for sleep. I also recommend trying to get to bed before 1030 to have the best of sleep. Also make sure that you turn your Wi-Fi off and that you do not leave your Wi-Fi in your bedroom. Better yet, if you can turn it off in your house at night, you can get those timers where you can set it to shut off at a certain time. So maybe it shuts off at 9 p.m. and then starts again on 8 a.m. I'd highly recommend that because that Wi-Fi is terrible for sleep. So you want to try to reduce that Wi-Fi. You also want to have a really dark black room. So the blacker your room, the better. Sometimes you can sleep with those face masks and that keeps out all light and it's a great way to also keep your metabolism strong. All right, so let's talk about some diet tips. So we know that there are definitely things that you can do to help increase your metabolism through diet. So the first thing is make a meal plan. And I know this sounds so um, obvious, but the reason we wanna make a plan is that if we don't have the right foods in our house, we're going to eat poorly. So it really is all about planning. So I'm gonna encourage you to hop into our Facebook group later and if you're not part of our team yet, just reach out to me and I can add you in so you can watch some of the, or get some more access to tools. And um, we will show you about how to make a meal plan. Um, eat the rainbow. So again, we just want to make sure that we're getting all of the vitamins and minerals that we need by eating as many different colors as we can. And um, eat anti-inflammatory foods. So if you're getting as... Um, omega-3 fatty acids in your day, in your diet every day, that really does help to reduce inflammation. 
So if you're not taking fish oils, that's something you definitely want to start taking. Um, or at least eat salmon, tuna, tofu, walnuts, and flax seeds at least three to four times a week. Um, swap sugar for dates. So there's so many other ways that you can get sweetness into your life if you're craving sugar. Dates are great. Fresh fruit is great. Apples sprinkled with cinnamon. Applesauce with some ground flaxseed in it. There's so many other ways that you can get um, sugar um, or a sweet treat instead of sugar. And I'm going to show you a really great recipe in a, in a minute. Now, the ne number six is eat until you're 80% full. And I even say, check the size of your plate, because a lot of our plates have got way too big over the years. And don't use those giant big plates that are usually available. And then just eat until you're about 80% full, and then, and then just go on from there. There's lots of research that shows that people who do not overfill themselves do live longer as well. And, and plan your treats. So this is not about restriction. So I'm all for treats, for treats. It's just trying to maybe not have them every day or every meal. So um, the recommendation here is that you actually plan a day, like a cheat day or a cheat meal where you can just eat whatever you want so that you don't feel deprived. Because when you feel deprived, that's when you might go ahead and eat way too much the next day. I always plan at least one vegetarian day into your week. So Meatless Monday is a great day to do that. Um, or maybe even plan another day if you're already doing one day. Maybe you have two days of meatless um, eating. It's a great way to increase your vegetable consumption, but also to give your body and your digestion a little bit of a break. And number nine is use a supplement to aid digestion. Most people's digestion is weak. And it's weak because of years and years and years of eating very difficult to digest processed foods. It's also weak because when we're stressed, what happens is the body does not decrease uh, enzymes, hydrochloric acid, to break down proteins. That is the one system that the body will shut down when stressed because really you don't have to eat to survive if you're under an attack, as in the old days. Um, so often your digestive system actually shuts down and you don't secrete the enzymes like you should. And so when you're stressed, you're just not digesting your food well enough. And when you're not digesting your food, you could feel hungry all the time because your body is starving for nutrition. So one of the enzymes that we highly recommend is terazyme and that you take this with your lunch and dinner. Um, to make sure that you're getting all the nutrition from that food you're eating. People notice a huge difference when they do this. Some people notice a difference in their skin. Um, it clears up. Some people notice that they just have more energy after eating a meal. The bloating's gone. This is such a good supplement. So this is definitely something that will help with your metabolism. And here is just an example of a really nice sweet treat that you can make yourself using essential oils. So these are, I don't know if you know what Lara bars are, but you can buy bars like this as well in the grocery store now, but it's made with just whole food. So it's very nutrient dense. So that's what I like to encourage is that if you're going to eat something junky and sweet, or not junky, but something sweet, try to make it nutrient dense. So at least you're getting something out of it and you're nourishing your body. Because again, if you're not digesting your food, if you're not eating the right level of nutrition, you're going to feel hungry. Okay, so here's a really nice recipe, and it uses cinnamon bark oil and for a reason. So cinnamon has been found to lower blood sugar levels, and we know that doTERRA cinnamon is very pure and potent. So you're getting a therapeutic dose with these, um, with these recipes. Um, another addition to your metabolism makeover would be the Lifelong Vitality Pack. So this is, again, just making sure that your body's getting everything you need. It's really difficult to get your nutrition through food alone. Because of our farming practices, they're not rotating the soils. Even the soil is nutrient deficient. And so the food comes out way less nutritious than it used to be even just 10 years ago. And so these vitamins are bioavailable, meaning that it comes from vegetables and fruits. And so the body can assimilate it really easily. Um, each of it contains 12 servings of vitamins and fruits. And um, you'll notice that it also helps to, to increase your metabolic function because of the, the whole food complex in here. All of the enzymes are intact, and it helps, helps to... Um, 
helps your body to process the food as well. Um, you're gonna notice that the Alpha CRX there works on cellular vitality. So it addresses any pain and inflammation that's in the body. And again, we talked earlier about that inflammation being a sign that you have a little bit of a buildup of toxins in your body. So you wanna really get those toxins out. And this is a really great antioxidant supplement. And then your fish oils helps to address that inflammation as well and also helps with your cellular integrity in terms of helping that body to get rid of all of the junk. So these are really important to help with your metabolism. And the, the next supplement here is Yarrow Palm. So this is Yarrow Pomegranate Nutritive Duo, and it's been found to help with immunity, but it's also been found to increase metabolism and to actually make you feel happier. So you'll have a higher level of happiness. And I've I've seen a bunch of people talking about this and a bunch of my friends have said that they've actually really noticed a difference when they take Yarrow Palm um, in a veggie cap every morning. So this is going to be part of your plan as well. What I love about this approach is that you're just going to be taking a few different supplements and what you're going to find is when you put less focus on the food itself and more focus on what you're filling your body up with in terms of nutrition and supplementation you're going to eventually start to make healthier choices. It's just going to be a natural thing that starts to happen. So the next thing that's going to really help with this is the Smart and Sassy Metabolic Blend. It's called Slim and Sassy in the U.S. You can get it in a gel cap form or you can make your own. You can just drink it straight up in water. It is a blend that's been designed specifically to raise your metabolism, um, to make you feel happier, to help with the digestion. So the peppermint and ginger in it help with digestion. And we all know that when your digestion is slow, um, you are not going to break down your foods as well or when it's weak, and then you're not going to feel the energy from your food. So this is something I recommend for people to take before a meal, take after a meal if you're feeling bloated, take it if you're sad, take it if you're tired, just take it when you feel like a snack, when you've just finished eating. Um, you're going to notice a huge difference with this oil. And what I'd like you to do is commit to doing this for three months, you guys three months of Slim and Sassy, this is not a, you know, something that's going to happen overnight. It's going to take time, right? And, that, and you kind of want it that way because this is, again, going to be a change for life. So you're going to notice that you're just going to naturally start craving healthier foods when you're doing this more often. It's, I'm, I'm super excited about that product. Um, so the Slim and Sassy can also be purchased in gum. I know a lot of people like that to ward off cravings. So consistency is going to be key here, you guys. So what you're going to be doing is every morning, you're going to take one to two drops of yarrow palm in an empty veggie cap under the tongue, or you can just put it right under the tongue straight up. It doesn't taste that bad. So that's usually what I do. Breakfast, you're going to do your lifelong vitality uh, supplements, and you're going to do about two to three drops of the Slim and Sassy. You can do it in a veggie cap, or you can just drink it in your water for the day. Then again at lunchtime, do the Slim and Sassy again at lunchtime. Dinner, you're gonna take your lifelong vitality supplement um, vitamins again, and then maybe two to three drops of Slim and Sassy again. And then at bedtime, you're gonna do one to two drops of Yarrow Palm again. Okay, so you can drink the Slim and Sassy all day long. You can actually have up to 35 drops of Slim and Sassy in one day. So don't feel like you're gonna OD on it. It's completely safe and it's really going to help you um, with your metabolism. So what I'd like you to think about now is to think about what your mantra is going to be. So we know that based on what we believe, we act on it. And based on what we act on, it will give us a certain set of results. So this is something I like to call the see, do, get model. So based on, based on your belief system or how you see something, will determine what you do, and based on what you do, it will give you a certain set of results. Does that make sense? I love that because, again, we have to look at our beliefs when it comes to our metabolism, weight maintenance, weight loss. What is it that you're saying to yourself about food, okay? And I encourage you to journal on this because if there could be some hidden belief about food that is driving what you do, you want to uncover it. And so just take a look at some of the mantras here. And then what I'd like you to do is just pick one that reson or a couple that resonate with you and start saying that to yourself every morning. Okay, so I will find clean alternatives to convenience foods um, is one in the nourishment. 
Um, so you can just kind of go to pick anything that sort of resonates with you here. And um, I will send you another one as well that I love if you're interested. And then there's also things that you can do to manage your emotions throughout this if the Slim and Sassy is not touching it. However, it's usually pretty good, but you can use rose um, on your face and on your heart in the morning. Frankincense is also really great. And then sandalwood's fantastic also for managing stress. All right, so for those of you who don't have the products yet, or maybe who are new to doTERRA, this is a snapshot of some of the products you could start with. Now you don't have to start with all of these. Uh, that free frankincense was only applicable up to the 15th, so sorry you missed out on that, but we will figure out how to get you the best um, deal here with these products, but I would highly recommend that you at least, at the very least, just start with the ones on the left, the vitamins, and the yarrow palm and the slim and sassy. And the other ones are just kind of an extra. But when you've got those basic supplements and you make, you build those into a daily habit, you're gonna notice that is gonna help significantly with your metabolism, okay? Um, for those of you who don't have an account yet, I will encourage you to reach out to me and we can have a quick consult to figure out what you're looking for and what the best way to start for you is. And there's a lot of perks that come with getting a, a membership with doTERRA. Uh, you get kind of like a private coach, which is me or the person who enrolls you. And we coach you along and we help you to make healthy changes in your life. And then you get 25% off the entire year and tons of free programs and eBooks and resources and support in our Facebook group. So if you do, decide to want to join us in this metabolism makeover program um, and you do decide to do that this week I'm going to give you some free samples of some of the oils that I referred to throughout this webinar and you're going to get them in that cute little keychain there so again just reach out to me and we will set something up for you to talk about that if you don't know about the loyalty rewards program and you are doing this metabolism program i would highly recommend you sign up for the points program so that you get points while you're ordering your supplements i really like to call this strategic selling because if you're buying your supplements at the health food store or your naturopath and at the grocery store and here there and everywhere then you're not really getting anything for them. And so it's really just about redirecting your, your spending. So I actually use doTERRA now as my online health food store. I love shopping online because I feel like I don't have time to like go out and about and try to find um, things. So I, I love shopping online. So this is really just the one um, store I use to buy all my health products, like my shampoo, my toothpaste, uh, my vitamins and my oils and just everything else. And so, and you'll see that your points build up really, really fast because you get points and you get tons of free stuff. So it's really a great program, very generous program compared to a lot of them out there. So lots of learning ongoing. We do uh, monthly make and takes with our team, meaning you get to bring your oils and you make products like DIY products that you get to then swap out your unhealthy ones with. And um, we have little promos and Facebook um, events and challenges that always run throughout the year. So there's always opportunities to learn more. So I'm gonna close it there, but after the session, I am going to send you a, an ebook. So there's an ebook that goes along with this learning. And so you will get that for free. And there's a bunch of recipes in there that I think you'll love to try. And if you're interested, you can follow along in our Learning One Drop at a Time Facebook group. If you're not in this group, just let me know and I'll make sure that I add you. And you'll get to learn about some of the things I talked about, but we'll go even deeper in the Facebook group so you can continue to reinforce some of the things I talked about so that you can implement them a little bit more slowly. But as I mentioned at the beginning, what I'd like you to do is just think about that one thing you needed to hear at the beginning of the class. And just take one or two things that may have resonated with you. A lot of this stuff, again, is stuff you already know, but what one or two things do you need to do and